Corey was born in 1989, so we started trying in 1983. And, um, and again, it was the early days of IVF, early days of everything. I was, um, both Greg and I were from very Catholic families that didn't believe in any of this, and um, the ethicists and the Catholics were having a long, big say about what was going on. And I came home one day and told my mother that we decided that we were going to try artificial insemination. And she looked at me in shock horror and she went, I wouldn't try anything artificial. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which uh, I just sort of blinked and went, okay, and just left it at that. <laughs> and, um, and then we sat down with Greg's parents and told them the same thing. And they said, why would you tell us what you're going to do? We don't want to know what you're going to do. We don't want to know anything about it. It's up to you, but don't mention it to any other family. And we went, you know what, we are. Um, we had concerns that it would come out later and we didn't want any surprises. Um, we had Corey and then three years later we had Aaron from the same donor. Um, so my eldest is very dark haired, dark eyed, very similar to me. The two, oh, mm -hmm. the um, two younger ones are very blonde as you can see. They're very like their dad. In fact, Corey was a, like a clone of him. <laughs> Um, which was quite amazing. They're not with me at the moment because Greg's very ill and in the um, terminal stages of cancer and the boys are with him today. Um, the, when I asked them about a month ago if they wanted to come up here and talk, they both said yes they would but they couldn't understand what the issue was because for them <laughs> there is no issue. They are what they are and, um, and they've never had any inclination to look for their donor. They were raised to know that they were donor um, conceived, but we never sat them down and actually had a conversation. We had a book in the bookcase. We had an older child who had to know why we were going off to the hospital constantly on these long jaunts, why I was constantly injecting myself with things and whatnot. So he had a very good sex education and he contributed to quite a few of my neighbours and his classroom mates about their sex education. So a few of their, their friends, her parents were quite happy that they never had to actually have the talk. <laughs> um, the little ones just grew up knowing the same and a girlfriend of mine is a social worker and we um, were sitting there one day and there was a show on the tally that came on about donor and the little one was about seven and he went, why would you do that? <laughs> and my girlfriend Amanda said, I thought you said you told them. And I said, I have. And I said to him, that's what you are. That's how we came and had you. And he went, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> and when his brothers came home from school, he proceeded to give them another big long lecture about how, how they were conceived and, and what it meant. And, um, and I worried a bit then about, you know, whether it was a shock to him. But again, it was just, that was the way it is. And... With their dad's illness now, um, I'm pleased that we've made the decision to tell, tell them very early and let them know. Um, Greg had to have bone marrow transplants. They were looking for familial donors. And the boys, um, our donor had different blood groups, so there's no way that they could ever be a match. And that would have come out or would have been a very diff difficult time at a traumatic time that no one was expecting. So we overcame that hurdle, thank God. Um, we later found out that my mother had a secret of her own and um, and that's been really quite difficult, dealing with all of that. Um, that was their era. Um, she's got the best, or had the best relationship with all of my boys um, after a concern about the artificial child. Um, <laughs> <laughs> from the minute the blue-eyed Corey was born, she just absolutely doted on him. And um, she's got uh, dementia at the moment and probably he is the boy that she absolutely remembers and connects with every time. The others, she sort of has to struggle a bit, but Corey, she's never forgotten his name. She recognises him the minute he comes in. She just still dotes on him. So I think that says something. Uh, Greg pa Greg's parents were a little bit standoffish and... Um, my brother-in-law and his wife had a baby two days before Corey was born and we were all together comparing babies, etc. And I noticed that she was reluctant to nurse Corey. And um, so we sort of, I don't know, 
manoeuvred her into a chair and set them both on her knee. <laughs> and from there on, she's always just, yeah, the boys are all just part of the family. And it's neither here nor there. At the end of the day, it really makes no difference whatsoever. Um, so I think honesty is, is, is the way to go. And, you know, at the end of the day, you can have a family made up of any, any configuration. And as long as you're all loved and you love each other and support each other.